Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the 15th lecture of the series. Recall that in the last lecture, in the 14th lecture we had considered uh, the functionals with the moving boundaries. Here the integral we had considered of simplest type that i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y x y prime x d x, where these boundary points a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 can move uh, freely in the x y plane or they can move uh, constrained way that uh, they are moving along a curve. So, in the last lecture we had started with the introduction of uh, these type of functionals. Here we had considered first the case when one of the points let us say the point A x 1 y 1 is fixed and the point B is moving uh, freely in the x y plane or moving along a uh, given curve. So, here B x 2 y 2 moves to neighboring point B x, uh, x 1 dash y uh, x 2 dash y 2 dash and then again it moves to B x 2 double dash y 2 double dash like the, that it keeps on moving or it may move along a given curve. Uh, so, here uh, as we know that uh, if the functional uh, is optimized for give, uh, points A and B, uh, where A and B are moving, then it also gets optimized when those two points uh, were assumed to be fixed. So, therefore, the, any functional which is optimizing it whether the points are moving or they are fixed that uh, function uh, that uh, extremal should be a solution of Euler's equation. So, that is the necessary condition which should always be satisfied. So, we can restrict our uh, consideration of variation of the functional over the family of extremals. So, here you know that uh, this Euler's equation f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 is a second order differential equation uh, which gives us the family of extremals as uh, two parameter family of uh, functions uh, where y equal to y of x c 1 and c 2 c 1 and c 2 are parameters. And so, if we assume that the point a x 1 y 1 is fixed then one of these two constants gets determined and then we get this sub family. Uh, y equal to x of c as family of extremals taken as one parameter family. Uh, that means, uh, c is given different arbitrary values and we get different extremals here. So, we can consider now i on this uh, sub family. So, i y uh, here is a function of x and this c uh, is the constant coming here uh, in the equation 4.2 and then uh, we have the integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y x comma c y prime x comma c d x. So, we need to consider uh, this functional only on the sub family of extremals one parameter sub family of extremals. So, then we consider it is increment or uh, uh, delta i uh, y which is the difference of these two integrals that x 1 to x 2 plus delta x 2 f of x y plus delta y y prime delta y uh, y prime plus delta y d x minus x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime d x. And so, here we break this integral into two parts x 2 to x 2 plus delta 2 and x 1 to x 2. So, these are written here x 2 to x 2 plus delta x 2 of f x y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime uh, d x plus x 1 to x 2 f of x y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime minus f of x y y dash d x. And these two integrals are then written 
like this, they are approximated uh, by the mean value theorem and Taylor series expansion. So, first integral is approximated uh, f evaluated at uh, some intermediate point where theta lies between 0 and 1. So, f of x 2 plus theta delta x 2 y plus delta y evaluated at x 2 plus theta delta x 2 uh, y prime plus uh, delta y prime evaluated at x 2 plus theta delta x 2 and times delta x 2 here and uh, then uh, by continuity it is written like f of x 2 y plus delta y at x 2 y prime plus delta y prime at x 2 times delta x 2 plus some uh, function epsilon 1 which is function of delta y and delta y prime of higher order in delta y and delta y prime. So, this is the condition required here that epsilon delta y delta y prime uh, divided by square root of delta y prime plus delta y prime square uh, tends to 0 as delta y and delta y prime tend to 0. So, here and the second integral here uh, using the Taylor series expansion can be written in this manner that x 1 to x 2 plus f y delta y plus f y prime delta y prime d x plus epsilon 2 of the same type as epsilon 1 and then here shifting this derivative on delta y uh, here. So, this derivative here shifted on to y prime and so we get this term x 1 to x 2 integral f y minus d by d x f y prime delta y d x plus the boundary term f y prime delta y evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus here epsilon 2 which is coming from the top. And so, here this since uh, y is an extremal, so this integrand is 0. So, we are left with this 14.5 uh, and which is then gives us delta i the increment of the functional as f evaluated at x 2 times delta x 2 plus f y prime delta y evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus some epsilon 3 which is sum of epsilon 1 and f to epsilon 2. And since uh, the point A is fixed, so we get delta y at x 1 is 0 and so finally, we get delta i uh, y as f evaluated at x 2 times delta x 2 plus f y prime delta y evaluated at x equal to x 2 plus epsilon 3. Now, uh, here uh, delta y at x 2 we need to calculate that which is we know that delta y at x 2 is not equal to delta y 2. Here the figure is given here uh, A is fixed only B is moving. So, B has moved from this to let us say point C here that uh, x 2 plus delta x 2 and y comma y 2 plus delta y 2 and this is B at x 2 y 2. So, here we can see that uh, this B L uh, is actually delta y at x 2 which is not as uh, delta y 2. And so, uh, we need to calculate this delta y at x 2. We use here uh, that B L is uh, m n uh, which is c n minus m n uh, c n minus c m. So, here we approximate this uh, c m uh, by using this assuming that this is a triangle. Uh, because since these quantities are small, we assume that these are straight lines and so C m over L m is approximately 10, 10 tangent of psi where psi is this angle. So, we get this as y prime evaluated at x 2 and so we get finally delta y equal to delta y 2 delta y at x 2 equal to delta y 2 minus y prime at x 2 delta x 2. So, using this finally, we get delta uh, now, since uh, this small delta, uh, see here capital delta is the increment and small delta i is the linear part in the variation, linear part in the increment delta i and so dropping those epsilon terms, we get finally delta i like this. Here we collect this y, uh, f y prime y prime times delta x 2 in the first term and so we get f minus y prime f y prime evaluated at x 2 times delta x 2 uh, plus y prime 
delta x 2. So, finally, we get uh, this uh, uh, variation delta i small delta i which is the linear part in the increment uh, capital delta i like this as 14.5 here. Now, the necessary condition is that this variation must be 0. So, we get uh, this 14.6 here and now uh, assuming that this delta x 2 and delta y 2 that is the increment that is the movement in the point uh, x 2 and y 2. Uh, if this movement is uh, independent, then we see that delta x 2 and delta y 2 can take arbitrary values. So, if you take delta y 2 as 0 and delta x 2 as 1, we get this f minus y prime f y prime equal to 0. Similarly, if we take delta x 2 equal to 0 and delta y 2 1 in 14.6, we get f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 2 equal to 0. So, independent uh, variations of delta x 2 and delta y 2 will lead to this and if we have the constant movement that uh, the point x 2 y 2 moves along a curve given by y equal to phi x, then we see that delta y 2 will be phi prime x 2 delta, uh, sorry this should be delta x 2 and hence using this in delta y 2 here, we get f minus y prime f y prime delta x 2 plus phi prime x 2 f y prime times delta x 2 equal to 0. Now, again delta x 2 is independent, it is arbitrary variation of uh, point x 2 and then uh, the coefficient of that must be 0. So, we get uh, this 14.7 which is f plus phi prime minus y prime times f y prime evaluated at x 2 equal to 0. So, this is the condition known as transversality condition and that is what is used here in this example 14.8 and uh, we take here the point A x 1 y 1 fixed and this point x 2 y 2 is moving on this curve and so here we need to find that point x 2 such that this extremal y x gives us the optimal value of uh, the functional i y uh, defined uh, integral x 1 to x 2 f x y square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. Here we assume that the value of f uh, on the points on this curve is not 0. So, using this transversality condition, we get f plus phi prime y minus y prime f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 2 equal to 0. Here f is uh, small f times square root 1 plus y prime whole square uh, y prime square and then finally, we get this after simplification that 1 plus phi prime y prime equal to 0 at x equal to x 2 which gives us that phi prime at x 2 y prime at x 2 equal to minus 1. This is the orthogonality condition. So, the transversality condition reduces to the orthogonality condition here. So, that is what it means that here uh, this point, so here this y x tangent to this and tangent to this uh, phi that is phi prime and here y prime they should be orthogonal. So, here it should have the 90 degree angle here. So, it should hit this. So, we should uh, take that x 2 at which uh, this tangent to this extremal and tangent to this curve uh, y equal to phi x must be orthogonal to each other. So, in the next example, uh, we take uh, we have taken i y equal to x 1 to x 2 integral square root of 1 plus y prime square over y and here y at x 1 equal to 0 and x 2 y 2 moves on the straight line y equal to x minus a. So, here uh, the transversality condition reduces to y prime equal to minus 1 at x equal to x 2 which says that uh, that means uh, y equal to uh, minus x it should be that line and this is y equal to x minus a and so therefore, uh, this extremal should hit here on this line uh, hit this line at this point x equal to x 2 y 2 orthogonally. So, that is what we get here and if uh, the movement is on vertical line then uh, we know that then delta x 2 must be 0 and so this condition 
here delta x 2 is 0. So, therefore, we are left with f y prime evaluated at x 2 delta y 2 is 0. Since delta y 2 is arbitrary, we get f y prime at x 2 equal to 0. So, that is what is obtained here. Now, if the uh, movement is along the horizontal line. So, if the movement if x 2 y 2 moves along a horizontal line, line then delta y 2 is equal to 0 and so we get this uh, from uh, again from this equation here. So, delta y 2 is 0 so, and so we get the f, uh, f minus y prime f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 2 times delta x 2 is 0. Since, delta x 2 is arbitrary, we get the coefficient of this equal to 0 here. So, we get f minus y prime f y prime at x equal to x 2 equal to 0. So, that is what will be used in this case. So, now here next case we consider the more general functional like this i y z equal to integral x 1, so x 1 to x 2 f of x y z y prime z prime d x. So, here as we have already seen that the situation is like this, we have x y and z here and so the point is in three dimension this a which is x 1 y 1 z 1 and this b x 2 y 2 z 2. So, this is the extremal here which is parameterized at x y at x and z at x. So, any point p here moving point on this curve will be parameterized here x is the parameter here x itself. So, x y at x z at x here that is what earlier we had already explained this. So, in this case both a and b can move or we can take a fixed and uh, b moving. So, like this in the earlier case also we had taken here this a, uh, a is fixed and b is uh, moving. So, if a is also moving we get a similar transversality condition at the point a also. So, if so, if a x 1 y 1 also moves, then we get a similar condition transfer similar condition that is f minus y prime f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 1 uh, delta x 1 plus f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 1 delta y 1 equal to 0. And uh, if this uh, delta since delta x 1 and delta y 1 can move freely, then we get the coefficients 0. And if x 1 uh, y 1 also moves along a curve uh, y equal to psi x, we get a transversality condition. Uh, there at the point in a similar manner. So, in the three dimension case also here a and b can move uh, freely, they can move along a curve and now we, there is one more possibility that it can move along a surface also, because uh, here uh, we are in three dimension. So, we can have this point a or b or both can move uh, freely either on a uh, along a curve or along two different curves or along two different surfaces. So, we will consider those cases here separately. 
So now in the same manner uh, this y and z must satisfy the system of Euler's equation f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 and f z minus d by d x of f z prime equal to 0. So, whether the points a and b are moving or they are fixed uh, this necessary condition must be satisfied. So, we get y solving. So, the extremals are solving this system, we get y equal to y of x c 1, c 2 and z equal to z of x c 3, c 4. if A is fixed, then two of these four constants C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4 are determined. that means we get then we get y equal to y of x let us say the parameter we write now c and z as z of x comma d. So, we consider this therefore, we consider i on these subfamilies y of c and z d which is integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y x c z x d y prime x c z prime x d d x and the point uh, b moves freely or moves uh, in a curve or in a surface. So, that is what we consider here. So, we consider this the uh, increment delta i y, we will not write the dependence here, uh, but it is understood that these y and z are the solutions of Euler's, the system of Euler's equation. So, that uh, c and d dependence is always there, which we are not going to write it explicitly. It is assumed that we are taking y and z as solutions of, let us give it the number. So, here this is 15.1 and this is 15.2 and this is 15.3. So, we are taking these y and z as solutions uh, as the functions in 15.3. So, we get this delta i y z here as integral x 1 to x 2 plus delta x 2 f of x y plus delta y z plus delta z y prime plus delta y prime z prime plus delta z prime delta 
d x minus x 1 to x 2 f of x y z y prime z prime d x. So, as before we break this into two the first term into two integrals that is x 2 to x 2 plus delta x 2 and then x 1 to x 2 which we will club with the second term. So, we get here f of x y plus delta y z plus delta z y prime plus delta y prime z prime plus delta z prime d x plus x 1 to x 2 f x y plus delta y z plus delta z y prime plus delta y prime z prime plus delta z prime minus f x y z y prime z prime d x. So, this is 15.4. Now, here uh, first term we will use the mean value theorem and with the second we will use Taylor C's expansion. So, using the mean value theorem and the Taylor expansion, we get this increment is y delta i y z as f evaluated at x 1 uh, sorry x 2 plus some theta delta x 2 times delta x 2 plus some epsilon 1 here is delta x delta y delta x prime delta y prime and plus f plus this integral you get x 1 to x 2 f delta f y delta y plus f y prime delta y prime plus f z delta z plus f z prime delta z prime d x plus epsilon 2 delta x delta y delta y x prime delta y prime. And in this second term we will, so here first term we use the continuity and so this is f evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta x 2 plus let us say epsilon 3 delta x delta y delta x prime delta y prime. So, clubbing whatever remaining remainder here with this and plus you get x 1 to x 2 shifting these derivatives we get f y minus d by d x of f y prime plus f z minus d by d x of f z prime delta y uh, here and delta z times d x and plus the bounded terms that is f y prime delta y evaluated x 1 to x 2 plus f z prime delta z evaluated at x 1 to x 2 and plus this epsilon 
to the turbine plane. Now, since the uh, y, the function y and z are uh, solutions of Euler's equation, so this term is zero. Similarly, this in, uh, part of the in integrand is zero. So we get finally this equal to f evaluated at x equal to x2 delta x2 and plus f y prime delta y evaluated at x equal to and also uh, here okay x 1 to x2 plus f z prime delta z of this evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus let us say some epsilon 5 uh, delta x delta y delta x prime delta y prime. Uh, here all these epsilons are uh, functions of higher order terms in delta x delta y delta x prime delta y prime. So, it goes it is of little order o in those terms. So, now we have delta since a is fixed. So, delta y at x 1 is 0 delta z at x 1 is 0. Thus, hence this linear uh, and hence the variation delta i y z which is which is the linear part in the increment delta i y z is given by delta i y z equal to f x to x 2 delta x 2 plus f y prime delta y x equal to x 2 and plus f z prime delta z x equal to x 2 and this should be equal to 0. Now, here uh, as before uh, this delta y at x 2 is not equal to delta y 2 and delta z at x 2 is not equal to delta z 2. And so, you can see that in the same manner we get delta y at x 2 uh, approximately here we write it as y delta y 2 plus y prime at x 2 uh, delta x 2. Similarly, delta z at x 2 is delta z 2 plus y prime sorry z prime at x 2 to delta x 2. Using these, so the, let us say this is finally, we got this 15.5 and this is 15.6. Using 15.6 in 15.5, we get this delta i at y z equal to f minus y prime f y prime into evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta x 2 plus and the second term also minus z prime f z prime times delta x 2. So, these terms are coming from here substituting this. So, here we will have f prime y prime times delta x 2. Similarly, f z prime z prime times delta x 2. So, that is what 
is clubbed here and plus f y prime uh, evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta y 2 plus f z prime evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta z 2 equal to 0. Now, if this b which is x 1 x 2 y 2 z 2 moves freely, then this delta x 2 delta y 2 and delta z 2 are independent variations. Then we get these three condition. We get f minus y prime, f y prime minus z prime, f z prime equal to zero, f y prime equal to zero, f z prime equal to zero at x equal to x two. If uh, this b x two y two z two moves on a curve, then here like in this figure. So, here A is like this that is x 1, y 1, z 1 and this B is moving on this curve in three dimension that is parameterized by. So, like this. So, B is parameterized here x phi of x and psi of x. So, then the, the curve, this is let us say this is the curve, okay. then the curve can be parameterized. as y so x equal to x y equal to y of a, that is phi of x and z equal to psi of x here so then you have delta y at x2 will be y prime at x2 delta x2 Similarly, delta z at x 2. So, this is phi prime, phi prime at x 2 this and this will be psi prime at x 2 delta x 2. So, this delta y 2 and delta z 2 these variations will be then given by in terms of delta x uh, 2 variation, because the variations of this delta y and delta z cannot be independent, they will be given in terms of the variation of if x moves then these uh, phi x and psi x also move. So, they, these delta y 2 and delta z 2 will be given by this. Using this uh, in uh, this so, this is 15.7, 15.8. So, using 15.8 in 15.7, 
we get f minus f uh, plus y prime minus y prime f y prime plus psi prime minus y prime of f z prime times delta x 2 equal to 0. So, that is what we will get here. So, since delta x 2 is independent we get f plus phi prime minus y prime f this is evaluated at x equal to x 2 f y prime plus psi prime minus sorry it should be z prime here f z prime equal to 0 at x equal to x 2. So, this is the tra uh, transversality condition. So, this is 15.9, 15.9 is called as before uh, here this is the general case of the earlier one. transversality condition, this will be evaluated at x equal to x 2. If point A is also moving, we get and if it moves along a curve, we get similar thing at x equal to x 1. Uh, so, we will have a transversality condition at that point. Now, if the other uh, variation could be like if this B x 2, y 2, z 2 moves on a surface, this z equal to phi x y, then so let us see the figure like in the figure. you have this x, y, z here. So, a is fixed and this is the surface here, this b is moving on this. So, this is x, y and z is phi of x, y. So, this will be moving on this. So, this will be x 2. So, let me write this in terms of x 2. So, this b will be actually x 2 y 2 and phi of x 2 y 2 like this. And so, in this case we get this delta z as phi x delta x plus phi y uh, delta y. So, delta y. So, therefore, delta z 2 will be phi x evaluated at x 2 y 2 delta x 2 plus phi y x 2 y 2 to delta y and so substituting it here this delta z 2 in from this here uh, delta z 2 uh, this delta z 2 we substitute here and then collect the terms so we get the following this so let's say this is 15 point using 15.10 in 15.7 we get 
this f minus y prime f y prime plus phi x. So, this should be actually plus this one we when we substitute delta uh, z 2 here this delta z 2 in the last term. So, we let us put that here. So, we have f minus y prime uh, f y prime minus z prime f z prime this is evaluated at x equal to x 2 plus f y prime uh, evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta y 2 and this f z prime and then here phi x delta x 2 plus phi y delta y 2 all these are evaluated at x equal to x 2. So, this is evaluated at x 2 and these are evaluated at x 2 y 2. So, this is equal to 0. So, now uh, this will be collected with uh, phi uh, delta x 2 here this delta x 2 times this delta x 2 will be collected with this and this one will be collected with this. So, we will have f minus y prime. So, this plus phi y minus f y prime f here y prime with this with the z this f z prime with this. So, like this. f minus phi uh, f minus y prime f y prime plus uh, phi uh, x minus z prime of so this is times delta x 2 plus this one so phi x minus z prime. So, phi x minus z prime and similarly this phi y plus f y prime like this. So, plus phi y plus f y prime y prime into delta y 2. All these are evaluated at x equal to x 2 is also evaluated at x equal to x 2. Now, delta y 2 and delta delta x 2 and delta y 2 are independent variations. So, we get f minus y prime f y prime plus phi x minus z prime f z prime equal to 0 and phi y. So, this should have been phi y z prime. Let me get this y prime here and phi y f z prime should also come there. So, this is f y plus phi y f z prime this should be equal to 0. Because here in this previous one we have f z prime phi x which 
comes here in times delta x 2 with this. So, we get phi x with plus sign and minus z prime. So, that is phi x minus f z prime times delta x 2 and here we have uh, f y prime and then plus uh, this phi y plus uh, phi y times f z prime. So, that is what phi y f z prime this is also evaluated at x equal to x. So, when we have this delta x 2 and delta y 2 independent variations, we get the coefficients 0 here uh, in this case, because they are moving freely on the point b moves freely on the surface. So, delta x 2 and delta y 2 will be independent. Okay, so, let us consider this example here. Let this one would be then number 15.11. So, i y z is, is the general case of the earlier one x 1 to x 2 f of x y z square root 1 plus y prime square plus z prime square d x. So, here a x 1 y 1 z 1 is fixed and b x 2 y 2 z 2 moves on the surface z equal to phi x y. So, here in this case we have f equal to little f times 1 plus y prime square plus z prime square. And so, here the condition f minus y prime f y prime plus phi x minus z prime f z prime equal to 0 and f y prime plus phi y f z prime equal to 0 at x equal to x 2 gets translated to this phi x z prime equal to minus 1 and y prime plus phi y z prime equal to 0. So, these two solving this we get 1 over phi x equal to y prime over phi y equal to z prime over minus 1. So, this we see that this phi x phi y minus 1 is the normal to surface and this 1 y prime z prime is normal to the surface z equal to phi x y and 1 y prime z prime is tangent to the extremal. Uh, so, due to the lack of time, we will be covering this, we will be finishing in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing this.